This is Dehancer. In a world where cameras are getting sharper and cleaner, Dehancer is a treasure chest of creative tools to give your digital camera footage a more organic, filmic look and feel. A tool for those who can appreciate how the quirks and flaws of film can breathe life into sterile digital footage. Here is some before and after examples of the kind of looks you can achieve using Dehancer on footage from a range of cameras. Dehancer reached out to me a few weeks ago asking if I would try the Dehancer Pro software, offering me a month's trial asking nothing in return other than my honest feedback and honestly, I've been blown away. Dehancer is a film emulation plugin available for DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere. It offers you a range of tools emulating analog film processes such as film stocks, film grain, halation and bloom. In this video I'll run through some of Dehancer's main features before showing you how I use it and grade with it in practice later. At the end I'll give my honest feedback on the software and tell you who I think it's for. Dehancer Pro offers you 63 accurately sampled film profiles based on classic film stock from Kodak, Fuji and others. Here's Rec. 709 followed by some of my favourite film stocks such as Kodak E200 and Cinestill. The film profiles act almost as presets. It also gives you optical print options such as Kodak 2383 which gives your footage a finishing touch with the kind of contrast and punch we see in modern movies shot on film. Here's a look at the film prints with Kodak 2383 and Fujifilm 3513 being my favourites. These film emulations, along with the other tools in Dehancer Pro, can craft some unique looks whether your footage is of people or places. The possibilities are endless. Let's take a look at some of these other tools, starting with Film Grain. Dehancer's Film Grain tool is possibly the software's most impressive feature. It doesn't just overlay grain on top of your footage like other plugins or DaVinci Resolve's own grain effect, it actually reconstructs the image to make the grain a cohesive part of the footage. Dehancer's grain function comes with many adjustable parameters to adjust the intensity of the grain and not just for the whole image, but in different tonal areas such as shadows, midtones and highlights, allowing you to really dial in the look. Dehancer's halation tool is equally impressive and it presents as a red halo on bright, contrasting areas and specular highlights. Here's a clip first without halation and then turned on here. It may seem subtle at first until we freeze the frame. You can see the red halo around the edges and the long grass in the foreground. Halation can often introduce a flattering warmth to the skin tones too. Here's another example. Keep an eye on those specular highlights in the background as we turn the halation on, giving a warm glow where the light shines through the leaves. For me, Dehancer's bloom effect goes hand in hand with halation. Bloom is the effect many filmmakers try to achieve using optical filtration, such as a black pro mist filter. Except here you have greater control over the effects, and of course, it isn't baked into the footage. It also only affects light sources, whereas a black pro mist affects everything in the image. Bloom looks great on nighttime images with bright lights and can give you an almost dreamy look. Here's a freeze frame of the bloom on and off, showing the difference it makes to a scene like this. Dehancer's combination of tools can transform footage, and I found myself going back and finding old footage for me to use it on, giving it a whole new look and feel. Let's dive into DaVinci Resolve and work through a clip using Dehancer. 
So let's do a quick run through in DaVinci Resolve of grading a clip entirely using Dehancer. Diving into DaVinci Resolve, here's our clip. And I showed this one early in the video and the reason I picked it is because I feel that it will benefit from many of the different features in Dehancer. Our first task is obviously getting this log footage converted into Rec. 709. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna use a single node and do as much as I can using solely Dehancer Pro so we can do the conversion using the plugin. So with Dehancer, we do our log to Rec. 709 conversion in the input section at the top. Uh, you could leave it at Rec. 709 if you want to do the conversion on a separate node, but we'll do everything in Dehancer. So I have to come down to choose camera. I can in my case, but obviously you choose whatever camera you're using. It's a C70 and we're in log two. I tend to just work down the plugin. So the main step is to choose a film profile. So I'm gonna click enable and by default it's on Kodak Vision 3 250D, which I don't mind too much, but you've got various options here like Portrait 800, Portrait 400. But some of my favorites are the Cinestore ones. So 50D and 800T. So I quite like the 800T one here actually. I also like Fuji Color. And one of my favorites is also Kodak Gold 200. And actually I'll probably go with the Kodak Gold one here over the Cine still. And we also have this push pull control here, which I tend to use it as a way to control highlights and shadows. So if you look in the scopes, as I raise this a bit, it pulls down the highlights. Um, and one of the main struggles I have with Dehancer is often protecting the highlights. So now onto the print section where we choose our print medium, which is essentially the finishing touches to our look before we get on to the effects later on in the plugin. So if we enable that whilst it's on linear, um, it does nothing to the image. So the only ones I really use in this section are the Fujifilm Pre513 and the Kodak 2383 print film simulations. Um, they're my favorite. The Kodak and Jura ones can be pretty nice on some things, but I tend to usually, I'm picking between these two. So both look good, but I'm probably gonna stick with what is generally my favorite, the Kodak 2383 print film. So working through the other sliders in the print section, first of all, we have target white, which is essentially white balance. And I'm probably gonna, gonna warm this up a little bit. Um, like so. We didn't have exposure, which is obvious, it's just overall exposure of the image, but I'll leave that alone. Again, I'm gonna do that in the first node. We have tonal contrast, which essentially you can pull it to the right to add more punch and contrast to the image, or you can pull it back to have a more subdued, softer look. Color density I like because I feel like it. it's kind of like saturation, but it only affects prominent colors in the frame. So here, an obvious color that stands out in this footage is the red top. So if I pull this up, you'll see that not much changes other than the saturation in that red top. It leaves pretty much everything else alone. So I like that because it's not affecting the overall saturation of the image. You can get really specific with the images, with the colors you want to pull out. So I will actually I'll bump that up a little bit. And the last slider is saturation, which works in a more traditional way you would expect saturation to work, where it just affects the whole image. So I'm gonna leave that alone. So now that we chose our film stock and film print, this is when I would go to node one and do any exposure changes that are necessary. So onto film grain. So just enabling it at default, for me, it's too much. So the first change I always make because of that is I change negative to positive, which gives you instantly a cleaner look. The sliders, size is obvious, it's just the size of the grain. I like it at default. Amount is just the amount of grain in the image. So the more you pull it up, the more grain. The more you pull it down, no grain. So leave it at 20. Film resolution essentially, I think, affects how fine the grain is, so I tend to crank that up. And then we have a really useful section here for changing the amount of grain in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So in a lot of digital cameras, you will get noise in the shadows where you might want to lower the grain in the shadows because of that. Um, I tend to just even these out so that I'm controlling the grain as a whole. And 
I might just drop it in shadows a little bit, but other than that, I leave everything even. So now onto halation. So let's enable it and the default settings are very subtle. So let's crank up um, local and global diffusion. So basically we can really see what's going on here. So you see the main areas it's going to affect are the specular highlights in the background and this like long grass in the foreground. But it's also putting a glow around the model and like a warm glare in her face. So it's affecting her skin tones too. So obviously this is too much. I prefer something much more subtle. So let's go down to more like 30 on each of these. And I don't mind that. Um, I will boost it a little bit for the purpose of the video. So let's go up a little higher and raise amplify a bit. That I think is perfect. Um, it's just enough so it's affecting the grass, it's affecting the model, it's just making the model stand out a little bit more in the footage. So now on to Bloom, so let's enable Bloom and this is essentially gives you that kind of glowing effects on bright areas, on contrasty areas and on light sources that people use say black promise filters to achieve. Our first two sliders are essentially like sensitivity sliders and affect the brightness threshold for when the bloom actually kicks in. So I tend to leave those alone. The main ones that will affect the overall bloom is diffusion, which as we raise it, it just essentially adds more bloom to the image and amplify just increases the effect. So if we put these on full, you can really see what the bloom's doing and how it's affecting very similar areas to halation. So that's bright light sources, specular highlights and contrasty edges. So they kind of work in tandem together. So again, let's go for something a lot more subtle. So even I think the default is too much. So I would pull down diffusion to something like that and amplify down a little bit. Still probably too much, but I don't mind the amount of bloom. So again, we've got our impact slider, which is essentially like an opacity slider. So where were we at 60? So let's half that to like 30. See how we're looking. That's a lot better. There. I would probably leave it at that. So here's halation and bloom off. Run through without it on. on, blooming on. So here is our finished look and I'm pretty happy with it overall. We can see how far we've come from the original log image and this was all just in Dehancer so you can do a lot with Dehancer. Um, I'm going to make a few more adjustments to the image um, and you will see the finished product now. So to round out the video, when it comes to Dehancer, here are some of my complaints or things that I would like to see improved with the plugin. So the obvious one is cost, and it does cost a lot with Dehancer Pro coming in at $400. So it has to be a plugin you are sure you're going to use a lot. I do think the price is justified given the quality and control you have compared to the competition and it's obvious how much work has gone into this software. So if you shoot narrative work or music videos for example, in those cases I feel like Dehancer is a must have. And you only have to look at Dehancer's official Instagram to see how many pro productions are using this software out there in the field. So you can buy the individual effects as standalone plugins, so you can get a Halation, Film Grain and Bloom plugin. But for me I feel like Dehancer is most attractive as a full package and because of that I would highly recommend picking up Dehancer Pro. So the biggest downside to Dehancer for me is just how poorly it runs on my 14 inch MacBook Pro. This is the first plugin that has really brought my computer to its knees and it seems to be the effects like film grain for example that my computer really struggles with. It makes sense considering the computational power I imagine is necessary to generate this kind of accurate film grain and you can turn these effects off whilst you edit to reduce the strain on your computer 
but still it's something I would like to see Dehancer improve on in the future. It would be great if Dehancer had some kind of preset system built in, so you could save fully finished looks that you might use often, but I'd even be happy with just the ability to change the default settings Dehancer starts with when you load up the plugin. I would personally like to see some kind of opacity slider on the film grain section, as for me personally, sometimes even the minimum grain settings are too much. So it would be cool to have an impact slider like we have on some of the other effects to just tone down that grain further. So overall, I've really enjoyed my time using Dehance over the past few weeks. Its two major downsides are cost and performance. Luckily, Dehance offer a two week trial of the software so you can see how it runs on your machine and decide if the high cost is worth it to you. If you decide the program is for you, there's a code in the description that the Dehancer team were kind enough to give me so you can get 10% off. If you're looking for that authentic film look, or you're like me and you just want to make your footage a little more interesting and stand out from the rest, I would highly recommend giving Dehancer Pro a try.